Well, good evening, everyone. Um, again, thank you. This is the HMT Recreation Complex um, Pickleball Court Community Meeting. And I am Tim Bonin, a Development Supervisor, along with Jim Rankin, Coordinator, uh, Program Coordinator at the Babette Hornstein Tennis Center. And we're here to present a uh, proposal for a pickleball facility at the main complex. So we'll talk about pickleball. Um, it is a growing sport. Uh, pickleball growth is up 159% over the past three years uh, and is the fastest growing sport nationwide. Uh, tennis as well has been growing at 33% over the past three years uh, nationwide. Um, so to accommodate the, the growth for pickleball and provide more courts, the uh, district you know, wanted to look into what factors we need to consider on adding uh, new courts. Um, and the main you know, factors are weather, location, and facility capacity. So of course, with weather, majority of players uh, prefer to play on a traditional court uh, surface commonly found outside and not on a gym floor. Um, and of course, uh, outdoor courts, players have to contend with rain, wind, um, and cold weather, which may impede on the experience of the game, as well as limit court availability. Um, and of course, uh, then there's the location itself. Now, location has to do with noise. And um, noise has been an unforeseen challenge uh, for outdoor courts and can be a nuisance for surrounding neighbors, which uh, limits the locations where pickleball courts uh, can be placed. Um, we have done our own study, um, excuse me, on existing tennis courts and overlay lines that some courts were, avail were available. But uh, overall, um, the lack of courts uh, in the district is our uh, biggest uh, factor, our biggest challenge. So. We do have 33 courts, um, outdoor courts, as well as four indoor courts. But again, now we're looking at the opportunity uh, for a dedicated court within the district. Um, so understanding the need for new more courts, um, staff investigated the HMT Recreation Complex as a possible site for a dedicated pickleball facility. Uh, the main complex is mostly buffered on all sides. Um, it has parking and utilities as well. Um, so specifically, we looked at the opportunity to repurpose uh, Harden Court Stadium and event lawns located at the main complex, which is shown here in the arrow and then this <clears throat> dashed area. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. So here's a close up of the area. Um, this is the area of uh, the Harden Court of Harden Court and the event lawns uh, on each side. Um, so we retained a civil engineer firm to perform a feasibility study to repurpose the court and the event lawns with 12 pickleball courts. Uh, the study analyzed the existing grade um, as well as for accessibility as, and, uh, and also accessibility, excuse me, constructability um, and identified where the utilities were on the site to see that they could support this new facility as well as a proposed uh, service building and an air structure as well for uh, the winter months. So the next step for us was to uh, focus on conceptual design for a permanent structure uh, to service daily visitors as well as tournament events. Uh, so some sort of building where you could access the courts as well as uh, pedestrian pathways or an entry plaza to the service building that would then connect the courts. And what our consultants came up with is this preliminary pavilion and court plan that you see here. Then, uh, so here is the plan here of what our consultants have come up with. Um, so the, this is the entry plaza to the pavilion. Um, there's a donor plaza here, which I'll talk to a little bit more uh, in the next slide. There's a so staircase entry and ramp that enters a covered plaza area. 
that then goes into the building itself. Um, this dark outline is a perimeter of the building in the shaded area. And when you enter the building, there would be a, a sign-in area for guests, as well as uh, guest seating. Um, guest seating adjacent to the courts. Um, with that, this building that we're proposing would have uh, four restrooms, uh, some storage, as well as uh, additional office space for, uh, for staff. Um, so the building itself is, is adjacent to the courts. So the, the courts as shown in the previous plan um, has a perimeter fence around it. And then we're proposing these 12 courts. Um, 10 of them are um, tournament play. And then one of them is ADA play. And the other one just to the south of it is just an oversized court, but they're all tournament size courts, meaning they have a run out to play for tournament, which is a bigger than just recreation play. And again, uh, an ADA court that is also used for uh, sort of championship play. And as I mentioned, uh, the air structure, um, this dash line along the perimeter would be the edge of the air structure that would then cover um, the pickleball courts in the winter time in that it would attach to the building itself. So the building, again, as you enter in, as I mentioned, in, for check-in, there's an entry point from there to get on and off the courts. Um, and so if you've been to the main complex and you play tennis or pickleball there, you know that we put up air structures uh, about September, um, have them up through the winter and take them down in early spring so that we can offer um, tennis and, and uh, pickleball year round in those other courts. And again, this would be a dedicated pickleball facility. So in the next slide here, these are some renderings that uh, our consultant put together for us. Um, so as I mentioned in the plan view, this is the entryway to the um, pavilion itself. Um, there's a staircase, which leads you directly up to it, and also a, a ramp to allow others to get up to the upper area. And again, if you've, if you've been over to Hardin Courts, you know there's a donor's plaza and a memorial uh, plaza, donor wall and memorial plaza there as well. What we will would do is um, we want to continue to honor those names that are on the donor wall and in the plaza. And... Um, transfer those in some way, either onto the pavement as you enter um, this plaza space or on a wall, maybe it's on a panel or something where the name of the court could be. So we will be preserving uh, all those donor names and, uh, and relocate them in this entry plaza. So in the entry uh, plaza, again, it, it, it act, you, this is where you access the building itself. There's a large covered area uh, before entering the building, and that would be used for uh, not just pickleball tournaments, uh, for setting up um, um, different vendors outside the building, or it could be used for other events as well. Um, so it has this nice shaded element to it as you enter the building. And then also what you see here, uh, which is parallel to the courts, is a long covered area. So folks that don't enter the building can walk up along the perimeter fence, and uh, during the summertime, when the air structure is down and look onto the courts as well and have some protection from the sun uh, and the rain. And then in, in this uh, image here, what you're looking at is you're standing on the court, um, looking north toward the building. Um, so the building that faces the courts, we, we, we're, we're considering that being mostly glass. So, it, so it's viewable from inside and out. So as people come into the main building, check in, this is the guest seating area that I mentioned. So people come in, sit down, uh, watch games or wait for the next match um, and then before they get onto the courts. And then this is that entry port sort of portal, so to speak, that gets you onto the courts. So if you've been to the other buildings with the air structures as a rotating doors, uh, those would be permanently fixed into this. So they work year round. Um, you do the same that'd thing. That would be the entry point the time, into like the, they do uh, the court. The, the so it's job. outside still. And then um, this is another uh, rendering, still inside the courts looking north. 
with the air structure installed. So again, if you were here in the wintertime, the air structure is up. What we're looking to do is create an opening in the air structure to allow that visibility in and out of the building. Now, we don't know how wide we can make this yet. It may be several openings um, because this air structure is, has to be cabled down to the ground. There's some structural limitations, but conceptually, we'd like to have this open view um, in and out of the court. So this is what it would look like um, in the winter time. So you're still out in the winter. And um, that is the presentation. Um, I'm going to narrow my screen here, shorten it a little bit so I can see better. So are there, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute try to get back to the main screen. Sorry, when you have the presentation up, I can't see anything. Um, so do we have any comments from the group? Anybody, some questions or comments that they would like to share? I pray, but I don't know. Hey, Tim, can you, we have some people still wanting to get in. Okay. You want to say something? Okay. There. there. They're all in now. Hey, you guys, um, can you tell us the timeline for this building? Um, yes, the timeline. Let's see, my notes here on the side. What we would be doing next is um, we'd be hiring a consultant to um, kind of finish the plans and take us through land use and permits. Um, but we would probably look at uh, construction starting in, um, we bid in 2026. So it will take some time to go through land use and, and permitting for the building and the courts. Um, but we look at starting construction and in, uh, in 26. And is there any budget for this? How much is accounted for this effort? Yeah, the 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 budget we have so far is uh, we have six point about six and a half million dollars budgeted toward this project. Is there a way? I mean, just a thought. Is there a way to use area high school and their gym? for pickleball purposes, six point six point five million can buy. Uh, a lot of a lot of gym use for uh, probably a long time. Uh, is there a thought to that? Because needs are immediate, I guess, rather than you know, waiting for a long time. Well, the, um, but we're looking to have a dedicated facility on our on our own campus as well, not at a school. Um, and this type of court too is, um, you know, we it it'll have a civil, it'll be an acrylic finish like other tennis courts or the pickleball courts that are outside, um, playing inside. Um, and I believe Jim, they do play they play inside the AC. Sometimes they set a pickleball inside when you play on a wood floor, it plays very different. Um, so we want that experience to be um, similar to what people experience in other pickleball facilities with a, you know, asphalt surface with the uh, acrylic finish on top. Okay. How many courts will be there? 12. We're proposing 12, 12 courts. Thank you. Sure. All right, Tim, let's, let's go through a couple, couple, got a few questions in, in the chat. Um, so, Will existing eight courts you use for pickleball, the air structure still available? I'm, I'm assuming you're asking at the uh, at the tennis center, um, and I believe so. But we will kind of kind of take that, you know, based on you know usage and you know everything like that. Um, Carl's asking, will the courts be for hourly rental, or will there be drop in hours for shared play? I think probably you're probably going to have a, a combination. 
you know, once, once we kind of, once we kind of get going in that one, we'll kind of take a look. We'll probably have both, honestly. So we think, I think uh, the user groups are used to both depending on where they go. So uh, let's see here. Uh, let me see. Rental shared play. Oh, okay. So wind, big, big concern. Um, when, when we go to the out, outdoor season, um, our expectation probably they'll, they will be doing windscreens, um, that can help mitigate, um, you know, um, oh, against those winds. Yeah, I'm coming down around. Um, so these here. are outdoor courts or indoor courts? Well, these will be outdoor courts, but then we will cover them in the winter like we do with the other courts with the, with the air structure. Yeah, I, I, so so they'll be sort of air conditioned, not I don't mean cool, but they'll be uh, um, so so no rain or other stuff during winter uh, will inhibit playing, is it? Correct. Yeah, it's a fabric structure in that. Um, again, there there's a um, a unit that blows air into it that pressurizes it to keep it up. So I don't know if they they can actually warm them up a little bit in the winter time, Jim. There's some ability to to add heat to those, but it's not like it's sweltering. Of course, you don't want it to be hot while you're playing. Uh, it's pickleball in there. The courts will you know, the courts will be in, in an air structured environment. The heating's kind of set at a standard, you know, mm -hmm. like our our domes, our air structures we have now. They're set at sixty one. Then the mm -hmm. heat kind of goes off. So in the winter time, pretty good. But then um, that's the advantage. Disadvantage is, you know, when it gets sunny, let's say February, March, April, it gets a little warm. Uh, everyone that's played in the, our air structure knows it gets a little bit warm. Yeah, there's no way to cool it, but it does warm it, right? And mostly in correct. The correct. Uh, um, let's see here. I think Tim, is there any plans to add pickleball lines to other courts, mainly school courts? You want to take that one, Tim? Um. Well, I I know a little bit of background. I know that we work with Beaverton School District um on some of the shared courts but i don't think pickleball is something that i think it's been talked about in the past uh, but i can look into that too i know we've had conversations with the school district about use of courts um and i and i would say that i don't think pickleball was something that we were able to do tim this is emily i can jump in on that one. Oh yeah Thank you. All right, everyone. I'm not on camera, but um, I'm Emily Kent. I'm the sports and inclusion manager working with this project as well. And I uh, work with the Beaverton School District on our relationship with them. And every time a court comes up for resurfacing, we do have the conversation, but ultimately the school district has the final say on whether we can add pickleball lines to each court. So it is a constant conversation with the school district and with our school sites that we're always looking into, but sometimes it's not feasible. So uh, a continued conversation and we'll keep advocating for adding those lines. Thank you. Um, let's see. Tim, if, can you share the uh, the 12 court plan again? Yeah, yeah, let me, uh, let me get that. One second. <clears throat> Want to work? Hold on. We'll just go to it. We're just going to be in a different mode. Hold on. Well, all this, well, that's coming up here. I'll kind of answer this next question regarding kind of runouts and spacings as you go through, especially with the curvature of the of an air structure. We've kind of taken that, you know, we've kind of asked the consultants, you know, to kind of take it into consideration. Uh, to create an additional room. So, you know, gives a little extra room so it's not as uh, tight. 
Oh, that was one of the questions. Yes, we, we looked into that. Uh, we investigated the, our, our current courts as well uh, with the air structures and the and sort of like there's run out to the courts, but then there's space beyond that as well. We want to make sure we had enough uh, space between the arch of the dome. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I, I've played on the current courts that you guys have. And thank you for having those. Uh, for those courts, for half the courts, we don't have, I, I feel we don't have enough space today, even though like it might look there's a lot of space because of the curvature. Uh, I think the north facing courts don't have enough space between the baseline. So like, I know that nobody, like when we are, when we have a group, everybody wants to stay away from half the court <laughs> for, for that exact reason, because there's not enough space. So when people are staying behind to receive the serve, they kind of is their back and their head hit the curvature. So th since this is a new facility and it makes perfect sense because that facility was built for tennis. And I think for tennis, you have enough. It's for the pickleball courts mm -hmm. that we, we see is too close. So for this facility, just wanted to make sure that we take care of that. I think uh, from this drawing, it seems like maybe on the sides, it looks too close also, not just the ends, but again, this is just a drawing and you guys know better, but just something to be careful about. Yeah, in, yeah, we're, we're also, uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, and we're also looking at how we'll separate the courts as well. Um, I know Jim, your his team is working on that. Uh, um, it'll sort of be a little different setup than what the courts are like. Um, our existing courts are where we have um, there's some permanent fencing inside those courts right now because they're used as tennis. Um, we're looking at more partitions that are mobile, it makes it a little bit more flexible. Um, and then how we're going to separate each court too. But that's all part of that next step as well. All right, Tim. Um, 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 how much space is there for player movement before encountering a wall on the side and back? Yeah, so there's that's a, the dimension. I'm sure you, you, sorry, you cannot see it, but we've got at least 10 foot clear on the side. So beyond the court itself, and again, these are um, these are all tournament courts here. And so beyond the run out on the ends and sides, there's 10 foot clear along here it get, does get a little bit closer with this longer court because it's a, a ada court or championship court but that court itself has another five feet within its own run out beyond the court so uh, then it has a five additional feet behind it so there's there, there's buffer at least 10 feet from the edge of any one of these courts um to, to the air structure. And then when the air structure is down, there's about another three feet or so until you get the, to the fence. All right, Tim, um, are there any plans to update resurface the lines on the basketball courts outside next to the athletic center? Tim, this is Emily. I can take that one again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, as of now, there is not, because uh, like similar to the uh, courts at the schools, Resurfacing a court is a um, capital project that are long-term planned and we rotate them throughout the entire district. So that set of courts is not on the this year or next year plan, uh, but they are evaluated every year, like every court that we have. And so the courts that are in the worst condition get refinished in the following year. So it's something we're keeping our eye on, but they are not on the list to be redone in the next couple of years. Thank you, Emily. Um, Jim, are there other questions there? Because when I'm sharing the screen, I don't see. Oh, that's fine. There's anything. one. I think that one more person to let in the meeting. Oh, OK. Uh, so take a look at that. Um, so one other one here oh, sure. in semi-angular sand versus round be used to improve footing during damp times. This is done at Murray Hill Courts. And can you can play in the rain where other courts are unusable. Um, also encouraging a backup plan to add even more courts if possible um, for uh, needed growth of the sport. So what is whether we add like some sort of sand into the acrylic surface was the question? I believe so. Because uh, it, we, we use a specific um, court acrylic system, I'll say. It's a uh, plexi, plexi paved system um it's it's up to four layers 
um, very specific or scientific, if you will, for our courts. And uh, we use the same system throughout the district, um, as well as certain the prep of the asphalt. We have specific certain specifications for the asphalt surface, and as well as the the covering, the primer that goes over it, and the court surfaces. But uh, we use a really good product, very high quality um, product for that. Um, so I hope that they wouldn't be slippery uh, when it is raining because it's a very high quality product. Uh, and then I think the second part of the question was uh, for future growth, are you guys going to leave some areas around it so that because the demand like we are seeing is going to go up more and since we're building a big facility, leaving some areas around it for future growth might be useful if possible. Well, they'll... Um... Yeah, we, we look at this um, as an opportunity right now to repurpose um, Hardin Court um, at the main complex. Again, because there's utilities there, we have parking, uh, we have staff there as well. Um, but this is about as big as we could get it <laughs> to fit in this space uh, that's available uh, between other conditions that are here. There's fire lanes and there's a tree grove we want to be careful of. So yeah, we, we looked at maximizing the amount of courts that we could here. Uh, we hope, though, in you know, in the future, you know, that there is another uh, community park or there may be, you know, another uh, recreation center that we would have additional courts. But that that's years, years down the road. But we all, you know, look to hopefully continue to expand opportunities for, for pickleball and other trending activities. Um, all right, let me answer this one. Um, can you share which pickleball courts are to be updated and resurfaced next? Um, so our maintenance team is doing an overhaul and a review of all of our sites just to kind of give us an update kind of where we're at. Um, and we'll kind of then once they give us that, we'll kind of take a look, you know, and see which sites are needed. And then like, as Emily mentioned, you know, every time we do we do one of those. We we also look at opportunity for you know pickleball lines, um, youth, whatever. You know, we kind of look everything's on the table as we kind of look at that. Obviously, depending on the location, neighborhoods, BSD, you know, all those factors. Yeah, and probably, Emily, again, I can add on to that. This this summer, Cedar Park Middle School courts got redone. Um, and then Elsie Stewer Center's court is being completely redone, changed direction, and made into a better resurfaced, dedicated pickleball court. Um, and then, like Jim said, we are analyzing for next year's. So we can really only do that work in the summer. So we take the next few months going into fall to analyze all the courts and put them on the list. And we'll know that uh, in like February, we'll finalize our list for next summer. All right. Um, so any any other questions? Got one more for you, Tim. Okay. So they're curious about uh, what percentage of the project cost is for courts and and what percentage is for the building. Um, that's a that is a good, very good question. Um, it I I don't know that off the top of my head. We're we're gonna start going through now. We're going through preliminary costs for both um and we'll figure out what that is I, I mean i think the building ultimately will cost more than the courts so maybe two-thirds of the cost of the courts themselves uh so as a follow-on uh mm -hmm. can we use the building of the current existing building that we have for tennis courts and just maybe try to build one more row of courts or at least reserve that area for future courts instead of having a building there uh, like, will the people be better served by more courts versus having a building? Oh, oh, well, yeah. And when I, as I was showing in in the plan view, um, the courts are all oriented north south, so it wouldn't be that we could add any more courts to the north if we wanted to. Um, unless you we can orient them differently, right? Yeah, they, but I although I think north south is the preferred. Um, solar orientation for courts. 
Um, uh, and the other thing for us too was in with these courts, we want to be able to, as a dedicated facility, um, have some sort of uh, uh, pavilion there to help service the courts, to help with people for check-in, um, help with tournaments and those sorts of things. Because now we have at the, the tennis center is where you check in, you know, to use the interior courts and also the, the staff can then monitor those outdoor courts to the north of it, those existing courts, but sort of this is like up the hill, so to speak, there'd be no way for for just to be have people on site and check in and help answer questions and those sorts of things. So part of it, I think, is it, it allows us the opportunity to have this pavilion there as well, again, whether it's for larger events. Um, and we do hold events, pickleball uh, tournaments on the existing courts now, but we really don't have a facility or, or a space where where people can go into and check in um, for those uh, tournaments as well. So that's part of this too, was just looking at, you know, if we're going to look at building a dedicated pickleball facility, how could we best serve uh, our guests, um, whether, whether they're using it, so. Um, all right, so. This question is kind of was, and is there a future pickleball court project being planned just west of 170th behind Mountain View School? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, we are under construction at, uh, so at, oh, that's uh, Mountain View Champions Park off 175th. Um, we built that park uh, four years ago now, I'm losing track of time, seven years ago. Um, and we also own some land there as well. So that land, um, we're, we're adding some new parking there as well as uh, a multi-purpose court for pickleball as well as futsal. So we'll have some expanded parking for those who use um, the park itself, the community park. And then of course also uh, uh, another court, very similar to if you've been over to Cedar Hills Park, um, we have a pickleball futsal court there, uh, very similar to that one in size um and then we'll answer this one uh so someone that came in a little late um yes the uh the proposed site is on the um main hmt complex at uh, the 158th and walker road um are you expecting private donations to help fund this and how much um <laughs> sure i don't know that would be um uh, we we don't um uh, I, I i don't know if there was some donor if there's some sort of negotiations above me that somebody would like to make a donation similar to what they did i guess years ago right jim with with a uh, hardened plaza that was part of the donor's wall uh, i think to build that court i i think that opportunity could be there people want to make a donation toward the facility um all right this one's general um at the athletic center the outside court shared with the basketball courts we've been adding and removing lines on a daily basis to add a sixth court can permanent lines be painted to make the court uh, permanent also there's unusable water fountain on the border of that court can it be removed to prevent injury yeah this is emily i can take that one again um i didn't know that drinking fountain was unusable so i will definitely have maintenance look at that because our intent is to always have water access out on those spaces and that is specifically why that court is not lined for pickleball because it is unsafe for pickleball due to the drinking fountain so uh, we would not be looking to add lines to that court and i will look at making sure that drinking fountain is usable so thank you all right, all right. Thank you, i think that's i think that was all the questions that I saw in the chat. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, as I mentioned, for those who didn't weren't here at the very beginning, um, we're recording this right now, and we'll we'll put a link. We'll get it somewhere on the main page or for the HMT uh, facility uh, recreation center web page to have it up there. Um, and also we will be, again, moving forward once we have a consultant, we'll be going through land use to the city of Beaverton. Um, that is also another opportunity that the city itself um, will request any feedback 
uh, when it goes into land use from adjacent neighbors for any questions or concerns. So there'll be another opportunity there as well. But certainly, oh, I, I'm gonna put my, um, I will put, let me see if I can do this. My uh, email in the chat and, and it's on, again, it's on the presentation we just gave. Um, if you have any questions, please um, feel free to contact me uh, anytime and I will do my best to answer it. Thank you too much. So there's my email for you. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. For the court we share with uh, the basketball, uh, we understand that we cannot remove that uh, drinking fountain, but for other court, the north part of the court is kind of uh, short, uh, you know, it's too short, to, you know, I mean, one of the gentlemen already mentioned, is there any way we can pave the, extend the concrete a little bit more, so make the court a little bit longer? Yeah. Oh, I was going to put it on my desk. That is something we'd have to really, I can't give an answer today. That is something we'd have to look at and measure and see if that's feasible in that space um, and what that would actually entail to do. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, um, that concludes our meeting. So thank you all very much for attending. We appreciate your time. Well, I'm fine since uh, you already put butter on it. I'm sorry? One more question? No? Okay. Well, thank you all very much and have a great night.